Hi guys, this is Grandpa here. Here at Grandpa's house, it's now early in the morning. Grandpa's up to read you the next chapters of this book. Today we're going to be starting on chapter 8. And chapter 8 looks like this. It has a V and 1, 2, 3 eyes. V stands for 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're in chapter 8, and the, the title of chapter 8 is Penguin Promenade. And a promenade is a kind of a dance, if that gives you a hint what's going to happen in this chapter. Mr. Popper soon found that it was not so easy to take a penguin for a stroll. Captain Cook did not care at first for the idea of being put on a leash. However, Mr. Popper was firm. He tied one end to the clothesline of the clothesline to the penguin's fat throat and the other end to his own wrist. Ark, said Captain Cook indignantly. Indignantly means he didn't like it, but he was willing to do it. Still, he was a very reasonable sort of bird, and when he saw that protesting did him no good, he recovered his customary dignity and decided to let Mr. Popper lead him. Mr. Popper put on his best Sunday derby, a derby is a little round hat, and opened the front door with Captain Cook waddling graciously beside him. Gah! said the penguin, stopping at the edge of the porch to look down the steps. Mr. Popper gave him plenty of clothesline leash. Gook! said Captain Cook, and raising his flippers, he leaned forward bravely and tobogganed down the steps on his stomach. Mr. Popper followed, though not in the same way. Captain Cook quickly got up on his feet again, and they strutted to the street ahead of Mr. Popper with many quick turns of his head and pleased comments on the new scene. Down Proudfoot Avenue came a neighbor of the Poppers, a lady by the name of Mrs. Callahan. She had her arms full of groceries. She stared in astonishment when she saw Captain Cook and Mr. Popper, looking like a larger penguin himself in his black tailcoat. Well, heavens have mercy on us, she exclaimed, as the bird began to investigate the striped stockings under her house dress. It isn't an owl, and it isn't a goose. No, it isn't, Mr. Popper said, tipping his Sunday derby. It's an Antarctic penguin, Mrs. Callahan. Well, get it away from me, said Mrs. Callahan to Captain Cook. An anteater, is it? No, not an anteater, explained Mr. Popper. Antarctica. It was sent to me from the South Pole. Well, take your South Pole goose away from me at once, said Mrs. Callahan. Mr. Popper pulled obediently at the clothesline, while Captain Cook took a parting peck at Mrs. Callahan's striped stockings. Heaven preserve us, said Mrs. Callahan. I must stop in and see Mrs. Popper at once. I would have never believed it. I will be going now. So will I, said Mr. Popper, as Captain Cook dragged him off down the street. And here's a picture of Mrs. Callahan and Captain Cook and Mr. Popper. Looks like a tangled up mess, doesn't it? Their next stop was at the, gross, the drug store at the corner of Proudfoot Avenue and Main Street. Here Captain Cook insisted on looking over the window display, which consisted... Got a sneeze here. <coughs> Excuse me. Which consisted of several open packages of shiny white boric crystals. These he evidently mistook for polar snow, for he began to peck at the window vigorously. Suddenly a car wheeled to the nearby curb with a shriek of its brakes, and two young men sprang out, one of them with a camera. This must be it, said the first young man to the other. Yep, it's them, all right, said the second young man. The cameraman set up his tripod on the sidewalk. By this time, a small crowd had gathered round, and two men in white coats even came out of the drugstore to watch. Captain Cook, however, 
was still too much interested in the window exhibit to bother to turn around. You're Mr. Popper of 432 Proudfoot Avenue, aren't you? asked the, young, the second young man, pulling a notebook out of his pocket. Why, yes, I am, said Mr. Popper, realizing that his picture was about to be taken for the newspaper. The two young men had, as a matter of fact, heard about the strange bird from the policeman and had been on their way to the Popper house to get an interview when they saw Captain Cook on the sidewalk. Hey, Pelican! Turn around and see the pretty birdie, said the photographer. That's no pelican, said the other one, who was a reporter. Pelicans have a pouch on their bill, remember? I'd think it was a dodo bird, only dodos are extinct. This will make an elegant picture if I can just ever get her to turn around. It's a penguin, said Mr. Popper proudly, and its name is Captain Cook. Gook, said the penguin, turning around, now that they were talking about him. Spying the camera tripod, he walked over and examined that. He probably thinks it's a three-legged stork, said the photographer. Hey, this bird of yours, said the reporter. Is it a he or a she? The public will want to know. Mr. Popper hesitated. Well, I call it Captain Cook. Well, that makes it a he, said the reporter, writing rapidly in his notebook. Still curious, Captain Cook started walking round and round that tripod till the clothesline, the penguin, Mr. Popper, and the tripod were all tangled up. And here's a picture of that. They are all tangled up. At the advice of one of the bystanders, the tangle was finally straightened out by Mr. Popper's walking around the tripod three times in the opposite direction. At last, Captain Cook, standing still beside Mr. Popper, consented to pose. Mr. Popper straightened his tie, and the cameraman snapped the picture. Captain Cook shut his eyes, and this is the way his picture appeared later in all of the newspapers. Oh, one last question, said the reporter. So where did you get your strange pet? From Admiral Drake, the South Pole Explorer. He sent him to me for a present. Yeah, said the reporter. Well, anyway, it's a good story. The two young men jumped into their car. Mr. Potter and Captain Cook continued their walk with quite a crowd following them and asking them questions. The crowd was getting so thick that in order to escape, Mr. Popper led Captain Cook into a barber shop. The man who kept the barber shop had, up to this time, been a very good friend of Mr. Popper's. I think that's the key right there. He used to be a very good friend of Mr. Popper's. That takes us to chapter 9. And here's what chapter 9 looks like. We have an I and an X. An X in Roman numeral stands for 10. And because there is a, an I, a 1 in front of it, it means 1 before 10. And that makes it 9. Chapter 9. And it's called In the Barber Shop. It was very quiet in the barber shop. The barber was shaving an elderly gentleman. Captain Cook found the spectacle very interesting, and in order to get a better view, he jumped right up onto the mirror ledge. Good night, said the barber. The gentleman in the barber's chair, his face already whited up with lather, half lifted his head to see what had happened. Gook, said the penguin, flapping his flippers and reaching out his long neck towards the lather on the gentleman's face. And here's a picture of that. Looks like Captain Cook wants to take a bite of that shaving lather on his face. With a yell and a leap, the gentleman rose from his reclining position, left the barber's chair, and fled into the street. 
not even stopping for his coat and hat. Gah! said Captain. Hey, said the barber to Mr. Popper, take that thing out of my shop. This is no zoo. What's the idea here? Do you mind if I take him out your back door? asked Mr. Popper. Take him out any door, said the barber, as long as it's quick. Now it's biting the teeth off of my combs. Mr. Bop Popper took Captain Cook in his arms, and amid cries of quark, gawk, ork, he made his way out of the shop and its back room and out a door into an alley. Captain Cook now discovered his first back stairway. Mr. Popper discovered that when a penguin has found steps going up somewhere, it is absolutely impossible to keep him from climbing those steps. All right, said Mr. Popper, panting up the steps behind Captain Cook. I suppose, being a bird, and a bird that can't fly, you have to go up into the air somehow so you like to climb stairs. Well, it's a good thing this building has only three stories. Come on, let's see what you can do. Slowly, Captain Cook lifted one pink foot after another, from one step to the next, followed by Mr. Popper and the other end of the clothesline. At last, they came to the top landing. Now what are we going to do? inquired Mr. Popper of Captain Cook. Finding there was no more stairs to climb, Captain Cook turned around and surveyed the steps that now only went down. Then he raised his flippers and leaned forward. Well, Mr. Popper, who was still panting for breath, had not supposed that the determined bird would plunge down so quickly. He should have remembered that penguins will toboggan whenever they get the chance. Perhaps he had been unwise in tying one end of the clothesline to his own wrist. Uh-oh. At any rate, this time Mr. Popper found himself suddenly sliding on his own white-clad stomach down those three steps of three flights of steps. This delighted the penguin, who enjoyed his own slide just ahead of Mr. Popper's slide. When they reached the bottom, Captain Cook was so eager to go back up again, then Mr. Popper had to call a taxi to distract him. Take me to 432 Proudfoot Avenue, said Mr. Popper to the taxi driver. The driver, who was a kind and polite man, did not laugh at his oddly assorted passenger until he had been paid. Oh dear, said Mrs. Popper when she opened the door to her husband. You look so neat and handsome when you started off for your walk. Now look at you. I'm very sorry, my love, said Mr. Popper in a humble tone. But you can't always tell what a penguin's going to do next. So saying, he went to lie down, for he was quite exhausted from all the unusual exercise, while Captain Cook took a shower and took a nap in the ice box. And that's the end of chapter 9. That's all we're going to do for today. Hope you're enjoying the book. Grandpa's enjoying the book. See you later. Come back again.